No turning back now. <laughs> hey guys, it is another tasty, tasty, tasty Tuesday. And I am, uh, I've been ready since I woke up, <laughs> basically. We're going to have a, a really good time, I think, uh, with one of my favorite uh, distilleries that uh, I remember having a few different things from these guys and um, never been... Um, disappointed so far so this will be uh, hopefully a couple new uh fun ones uh benomic is the distillery we're going to take a look at a little later when uh, malt comes and um these are going to be from him actually um i have been lucky enough to have um the pete smoke uh 2006 i've had one of my favorite all-time favorite dreams is the imperial proof 10 uh, year but at 50 something percent i can't remember i think it's like 57 point something uh going off memory uh but that one is an excellent and it's in the top like five drams i have to say uh at least top 10 if not maybe even top five it's a memorable glass and i've had I, I, it was a great experience having it at a bar and then uh, liked it enough to get my own bottle. And from the neck down to the bottom, through oxidation, not oxidation, with water, without water, it, no matter how you address that bottle or want to, you know, have an experience with it, it's always good. That Imperial Proof is just top of the line and they do still have it i just look reading a little news on the side about the distillery has had a major marketing shift but the good news is is that all the bottles we know um like the peat smoke and the organic which is the first one we're going to take a look at tonight and um even the 15 uh, they have a new 10 year but the 15 and all that's the same from what i gather it's just the the labels have changed uh they did release uh excitingly uh, a 21 year old recently i just heard about it tonight and looked it up and the price isn't that bad maybe depending on shipping might be a kind of a pain because i think it's a uk only thing right now unfortunately so i might have to wait and see on that wow a lot of you guys uh, popped in like all at the same time must have been at uh, malt's happy hour if you haven't been there before check it out malt muser has a, a happy hour before uh, we even get started here at nine eastern uh silver lot good to see you man i hope you're having fun daniel always good to see you trooper hopefully the uh the um the oil rig's doing well, and you're not uh, stranded without anything. Ma here, uh, good to meet you. I'm not sure if you've been here before. If you have, uh, glad to see you again. If not, and uh, you're new, uh, welcome. And uh, what? Do you, tell me what you're drinking, by the way, too. Just got a curiosity. Good to see you, Stephen. Cohen, happy Tasty Tuesday to everybody. Never had a Benomic. Well, you're in for a treat, man. And old bottling or new bottling you, you really can't go wrong before i forget let me get malt his uh, invite so that he can join with us try to have this queued up but uh sorry <laughs> you know how it goes sometimes you get sidetracked with issues and all that let me see here let me invite copy all right sorry about that that has been sent. Anyway, um, yeah, if you haven't ever had a Benomic, you're in for a treat, man, because uh, uh, like I introed with, the peat smoke, uh, they have peated whiskey, and, and it's good. It's very good. Um, both the peated and uh, the peat smoke, uh, also the uh, Imperial Proof, now known as Cast Strength. They've they've changed their whole line, and they've. I was looking through some of the names, and it's funny that... Um, the look of the bottling is a complete difference and i was trying to decide whether or not i liked it or not that's another discussion uh here after we uh, go through the tasting on uh i usually don't get into the marketing and stuff but sometimes i think it's interesting in to see what they're shooting for but basically they have their 10 year still they have a 15 year still they introduced the 21 thank god because i was hoping that they would do that because i never had an older uh benomic before um and they got a cast strength version that's called their cast strength vintage. Now, I think that's practically the same as the Imperial Proof because it's 57.2%. It's uh, 2009. It might be a little older. 
It's first full bourbon and sherry casks. Uh, they still have their uh, contrast organic, which is, you know, the same as their uh, old organic. They have the contrast peak smoke, which is the same as the peat smoke. Um, and they have a 12, which I'm surprised they have a 10 and a 12. And they have a single cast that's online uh, at the 56.9. And maybe that one is more lean towards the Imperial Proof, actually, the single cask. Um, we'll have to talk about that and see if anyone's ever done any homework on some of the new stuff. I've looked around and I've, I've tried to find information, but a lot of this is actually pretty new uh, with the uh, 21. Yeah, no hat tonight, no hat stream. I'm uh, I'm going uh, going with the old uh, classic sweater too. Just this is this is the lo-fi telex. <laughs> good to see you, Juan. How's Hawaii? Uh, Meister, good to see you. And let's uh, let's say hi to well, – sorry about that, man. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Oh, I can't hear anything. Maybe it's my end. One second. Yeah, that's my end. Go ahead, man. How's it going? Pretty good. Sorry. I, I was uh, chatting with the guys, and then I realized, oh, I got to get him his invite. <laughs> no, you're good. You're totally good. Um, ready for another Tasty Tuesday show, my friend. How are you, man? What's been up? Very, very good, and I appreciate you doing the uh, happy hour, and it looks like a lot of the guys uh, popped right in. Hey, Maher came over. Yeah, he's awesome. Um, he, uh, he's he been talking – I was chatting with him a, what, last week about some stuff that he uh, was recommending around Amrut and Paul John. He's in India. So oh, he's, wow. got, he's got some serious knowledge on that. Great dude. Glad to see him. And uh, Silverlock, who else we got in? Cohen, Andrew, Molasses. Frenchy, Connor, whole crew. What's up, everybody? Let's get after it. Yeah, it's. Uh, I was uh, chatting with the guys about how um, Stephen has some, not, not many, don't have an opinion on it really yet. Okay, well, have you uh, had any of the really old stuff, like the 21 or the uh, at least the uh, 15? And uh, if not, which ones have you had, Stephen, if you can remember? Um, I'm familiar with uh, the Pete Smoke, which I like. The, it's a 2006. Yeah. I had um, the, um, I want to say it was a, a 10 or a 12 before. I can't remember which one it was. Uh, that was a while back, too. And I liked it, but my favorite was that Imperial Proof 10-year, man. That is, like, one of the best drams I've ever had. Dude, you know what? Uh, I happened to find one of those recently on a dusty shelf. Oh, Nice, yeah. And that's beautiful. We'll have to revisit that at some point. I believe it has been discontinued, which is quite depressing. Um, yeah, hold on to that because I plan on getting this new 21 that just got real. They, they just announced recently they're doing a 21 year for the new Ben Romick series. Uh, so I'll, it'll be a ways down the way since we're doing it tonight. But uh, next time we approach it, yeah, we should do a 21 and maybe that one and maybe something else. I'll try to save some because it is damn good. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's, I, I was, fly, man. That whiskey is fantastic the first time i had it was in a bar in baltimore um something like the love and the regret it's a really good place in baltimore if you've ever been there um it, it, baltimore's got a couple really good scotch bars that one and birds of a feather uh over in false points excellent um, covid nightmare is over we should uh, make that happen that definitely that's not for me so and they, that's where I had it. Uh, I had it at a bar, and I, it was such a good experience. Even with you know, and having a drink at a bar is not the easiest thing to do, as you probably know as well. If you're right. eating and there's people smoking or whatever's going on, so you know, it, once you if you have it and you like it that much, to get your own bottle after that, and the entire bottle from the neck pour down to the bottom is all great. You know, you're in for a damn yeah, good drink. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm excited for this show to get into. Uh, to get into Ben Romick a bit, um, this has been a distillery that I really just started exploring for the first time this year. Um, as, as you know, you know, when you're on your journey, you kind of continue to expand and try other places and, and stuff that maybe is not, you know, uh, the, the, the stuff that folks necessarily think of when they're uh, going out shopping for whiskey. It's, it's one of those that kind of maybe flies a little bit under the radar, maybe not very well known. So I'm really looking forward to this, but um yeah, before we get in, uh, have you got yourself anything uh, new this week? Yeah, I picked this up a couple goodies today, matter of fact. I went up and um, spent a little time with my buddy Tom up at Petite Cellars and picked up um, some really good uh, old, um, 
let me pull up my little list here. Sorry, I had it. List. He's checking it twice. <laughs> Tobermory 21, which is a Mazania cask. It's going to be really, really, oh, really oh, good. Oh, oh, oh. okay. Uh, Balvenie 21 Portwood, which is going to be hopefully good. I never tried it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you ever had the Balvenie 21? No, no, I haven't. Uh, did yours come in at 43% or 40? Let me check real fast. I'll be right. I think I it's actually here. That it might be 40, which would be criminal. But uh, I think it's 40, at least in the UK. So it might be one of those like 40 in the UK, 43 in the States situations. Um, I've got it right here, matter of fact. It is. Let's, um, this one's 43. So we're in good Whoa. shape, I think. Good. Right? Good, good, good. <laughs> at least, at least we got that. Yeah, that's good. So thank God you sure. scared me. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's like like uh, Glenmorangie ten, Lafroy ten. Those are all forty percent in the UK, which is, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't get it either. But <laughs> there's probably somebody might have a re uh, knowledge about why they do that, but it, it seems ridiculous to me. I guess Americans just typically like ours a little more hot. I mean, I, I bet you that's just all it is. <laughs> I mean, you know, for all the things wrong with America's bigger, better attitude, uh, when it comes to whiskey, I guess maybe we at least <laughs> got a feather in the cap on that one. <laughs> yeah, I thank God that's a 20, uh, uh, 43 because that you scared me. Uh, one that I have a love-hate relationship with, and I th uh, hopefully it's going to be good coming back to it, is the Glenmore G18. We're going to take a look at that mm, one. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that one from the last time I had it a couple of years ago. So, yeah, looking forward to that. I am. I, I think I was maybe disappointed at first, but once you look at the value of that bottle, it's like, wow. I mean, it's where it, it shines. And then rounding out with the Glymphitic 21 rum cast, that should be interesting. Nice. Yeah. And, uh, we've got already got the Akintoshin 21 and the Glenlivet 21 and the Glengoyne 21 on the uh, Horizon 2 with the Glencadam 21. So that's going to be really. Yeah, that'll be good. And um, yeah, later in the show, maybe we can give a sneak preview of kind of like how we're going to round out the, the year. And, you know, we're going to keep going into 2021 for Telex and Malt Tasty Tuesday. So I uh, hope everybody is uh, enjoying it so far, continues to join us. we got a lot of whiskeys coming up. Um, I've got quite a few new things since we last talked as well. Um, uh -oh. <laughs> let's see here. So we have uh, two Glenlivets. Glenlivet Nadura. This is the NAS version. Um, Oloroso first fill. Ooh. We got that. Uh, Glenlivet Caribbean Reserve. This is, uh, well, gee, I wonder which one, which show we're going to do this with. Out of the <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, that, that is a whiskey that exists in the world that will taste. I, I'm not going to get you excited about it. Uh, new long row, um, 23 year old, or I'm sorry, 13 year old, uh, Chilean Cabernet Sauvignon mat matured. So I grabbed that recently. That's gotta be interesting. I'm oh, yeah. I've, uh, I've already tasted it and it definitely is. Um, cheater. <laughs> yeah, well, when you get something that good, you, you can't pass it up. Um, I've got a new rye, E.H. Taylor straight rye bottled. Oh, in 50, 50, 50. I would love to try that, man. All right. Well, I'll put it in the box. If you don't it. mind, yeah, put that oh, one. No, I don't mind at all. Uh, he's not good until it's shared and all of that. Um, so I got that. Um, I think. I love your new backdrop, by the way. That's oh, cool. Great. Yeah, I'm in a little new digs. I put together a small shelf of just some of the stuff I like to sip on. That's um, beautiful, man. Yeah, I'm going to hopefully expand it eventually. Um, but for now, yeah, it's a little bit new digs here. Uh, it's been going pretty well. Oh. Um, Isn't it amazing how good that Bob Blair vintage looks on that wall? It's like, I wish they kept that old packaging so bad. I love that. Oh, why, man. God, like the new packaging is so whack. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Black Adam 13, yes. the, the reawakening. Um, this is the one that they put out when they kind of refill, uh, started up the distillery. Non chill, natural, natural color, all prominent, 46% ABV. Nice. Good news on that. Uh, we also have Balvany Week of Pete. Mm. This is uh, 14 years old, 48.3% ABV. Um, I've actually, this is going to, yeah. That's. <laughs> That's gonna be it's that's gonna be a winner. Um, is, is that bottle from this year? 
Yeah. Uh, no, I think it's last year. I'm not actually 100 percent sure. That's still cool. I haven't had that one for a long a while. I think I had it when I uh, was looking for my first year, my journey, which is about five years ago. I got to have like a Pete week 14, I think it was. Sure, sure. And I do remember it being a, a good Pete. So hopefully that'll be a, a still a good one. Then. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think that's it. Um, oh, I got a rum, but you know, whatever. I'll share. So. If anybody here is a rum fan, uh, when I was out in California, I finally discovered the Four Square Exceptional Cask Series. Mm -hmm. I had the Sagacity. This is the 2017 Fully X Bourbon, 59%, 12 years old. I have this in the box for you. We're going to do, we should drink this when we do the, the Glenlivet Caribbean Reserve and the 21 Glenfiddich because after we taste those, this, this is by far the best rum I've ever had. Um, wow. The, the sagacity that I had was ex bourbon, ex Madeira cast. This is all ex bourbon, but boy, let me tell you, um, these, they do things the right way. They don't do the added sugar. Um, this guy there is, uh, I think his name's Robert Seal, like just absolutely killer. Really looking forward to hearing your thoughts on this. So yeah, a bunch of new stuff here to close the year and, um, yeah, excited to get into the Ben Romics tonight. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a funny how I was trying to look at you know I always like to learn about who runs them and when they got you know the yeah. distillery and all that and I'm surprised it's one of the the only it's the only one that Gordon McPhail actually run right now I thought they had other ones but it's the only one they really run. Interesting. Yeah, I mean this the the four square stuff. Are you talking about Ben Romick? Yeah, sorry. I yeah, thought that's yeah, 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 definitely. Well, ben Romick is an interesting distillery, man. Um, so the first one that we're gonna do i suppose we could pour it out um i'll give you the tail of the tape here on the organic if you want to dive into it oh yeah okay so then romic organic um what is the organic thing all about well i'm gonna tell everybody about it here in a second so first and foremost uh this is bottled at 43 percent abv this was distilled in 2010 bottled in 2015 so it is five years old so it's a young whiskey Aged in oak casks, it says. Um, it does not mention anything about non-chill or natural color. So we may assume that there's some chill filtration and uh, color added to it. Nothing inside. As far as the box goes, let me just take a quick look here. So here's what they have to say about the organic component of this, right? It's made using the finest organic ingredients. There you go. Um, our three distillers orchestrate every second of the distillation, American oak casks, blah, blah, blah. Uh, our whiskey meets rigorous UK Soil Association standards for growing ingredients, distillation, and maturation and bottling. Unique on launch in 2006, this organic whiskey is one of a kind. So basically, it's got a bunch of stamps certifying that this is organically grown um, barley. And yeah, that's about it. So we don't really know. I'm trying to look. There's some writing on the side here. Did you say that was 43 or 46 percent? Sorry, 43. Yeah, 43 okay. percent. Um, that's, that's the only change I see on the, the. I was just trying to figure out like differences between the new and the old bottlings. The right. new ones are at 46 percent, and they do say non-chill filtered. But oh, I was hoping that it applied to that one as well. But yeah, tough to say. Um, as folks may know, uh, this is the, as of this year, Ben Romick has changed significantly their labeling. So it doesn't look like this anymore. Um, these are bottles that I got prior to that line, uh, that change. But, you know, this was one of those whiskeys. This came out originally, they started releasing this in 2006. So if you think back, Omen, where it's the farm to table type approach, like, this may be one of the first, if not the first kind of single malts that was ahead of the curve on this whole kind of organic, uh, you know, uh, locally grown stuff. Um, I'm sure there are others, maybe folks in the chat know, but they seem to have uh, kept this going for quite some time since then. And they've been making whiskey since 1898. So, 
Yeah, the only one I could think of that kind of does it similarly is the Springbank guys, but I don't, who knows who was doing the organics, like the green series first, because it was right. that's newer, that was like a newer series only like four or five years ago, I think, that they started that, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, and then you think uh, like Deanston too, right? Deanston has like an organic, I think, but those are all relatively new, so... Um, I think it's when the whole terroir scene kind of got really in people's faces, but yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I do think there's, there's. A, I think once you sample this one, have you already had a sample of this one? Well, I've drank quite a bit of it. I think I was gonna say I think you're gonna I think you'll find that I have never had this one yet. This is my first time. I'm, I'm assuming that it's going to be really good from what I hear. A lot of people do like this one. Yeah, I mean, I haven't had it in a few months, so I, I can't speak directly to it. Uh, based on memory, but I, I did quite enjoy it. Um, like I said, we don't know for sure if it's chill filtered or natural color. So, I mean, we probably have to assume it, but um, it is a young whiskey. And with that, uh, that's the tail of the tape on the Ben Romick organic. Um, this is around a 50 to $55 bottle, give or take, depending where you are. I wouldn't say it's exclusive, but it's also not like the Ben Romick you're gonna find at every shop. So if it's something you are looking for, you might have to hunt a little bit, but um, let's do it. Yeah, I don't know when these 2020 bottlings are going to be more readily available because like Malt said, I mean, a lot of the times you go into the shops, I, I think I have seen like a new 12, a new 10, maybe a 15 even, but I haven't, and they do have these in like this organic still released, but the only difference it looks like is they give it a, little bump up which is kind of a nice thing we'll have to try it out later uh 46 percent abv yeah and not chill filtered so i mean they, they are up in their game even with the new releases which is makes me feel good at 55 88 but the catch is this is overseas so if i ordered this i'd have to pay 55 88 plus 61 64 for shipping and that's where you get screwed so yeah no <laughs> you don't want to do that so yeah hard pass on that one <laughs> i would wait till these guys are more readily available over in the yeah United yeah States. totally totally all right well um mm, nose time <laughs> Happy Tasty Tuesday, everybody. Yeah, definitely. I've been looking forward to this so for so long. <laughs> oh, oh, wow, man. I, I get like pears. It's like the first thing I got on the nose. I get hay, fresh, fresh cut hay, fresh, you know, I don't want to say barley, but you know. Like fresh, no, you're right. Fresh, it's like a hay barley green. mix. Yeah, pears for sure. Apple. Ooh, they're, they're crisp, bright ones, too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. A little bit of spice, a little bit of cinnamon maybe in there. Huh. Yeah, I mean, this is ex-American oak, so I'm assuming this is going to have ex-bourbon. Um, oh, like yeah. I, get a oak oak on it. I mean, it's it's ex-bourbon cast, so it's not dominating. Very, It's very bright. A little pencil bit shaving. Ooh, interesting. Okay, yeah. yeah, that's that's one of those telex notes. I don't, <laughs> I don't always pick it up, but once you say it, I'm like, oh yeah, graphite. <laughs> well, not Fresh graphite. Thankfully, there's no metallic in there, but the pencil, yeah. should be like the like the witty burnt, you know, the the first grade pencil, like you know, you're doing that with the pencil sharpener all day, and you get that. Yeah, smell. <laughs> yeah. We're showing our age. I don't know if people use pencils anymore. <laughs> I guess that's true. That's sad. There's a nice, um, I mean, you were saying uh, pear and apple. There's something else, too. It's, I don't want to say, it's almost like green grapes. Yeah. Kind of in the background. Yeah, like a, um, like those, yeah, those white slash green yeah, yeah. grapes that you can find it's sometimes. Sort of tart. Mm, but, man, that the center of this, honey, slight toffee, that just that, 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 Soft cut grain, like you just walked into a, you know, a barn of fresh cut hay or something like that, but a little bit stronger. It's really nice. I know it's not sherry, but I'm I'm getting some sort of like cherry, almost like a sweet red flavor of some sort. I'm, I'm, it's almost like a real light strawberry or like a, a real bright cherry, like a maraschino cherry or something. Hmm. A little bit of sweetness. It's, it's a tough. It's like barely there for me, but it's it's some sort of like more deeper than your typical fruit layer. 
Yeah, it's a surprisingly assertive and aggressive dram for 43%. I do feel like, I mean, that, and that's a testament to the youth, of course, but wow. Also, these guys are really big on handcrafting artisan yeah. Deal. So uh, I think it. I think this is the reason why we like these guys as well as we like Springbank and the guys that take more of the time to make it the right way. Sure. Yep. Mm. All right. Yeah, it's got definitely the woods kicking up more. Yeah. Yeah, it does have. It has a miscellaneous spiciness to it. Can't yeah, put it's a finger on, but it's subdued. It's like when I go in for a taste, I'm wondering if it's going to be as spicy as like I th I'm, I'm envisioning like this white pepper kick I'm going to get, but yeah. it, it might not be that way. It's got a really good viscosity. Yeah, it holds its its legs really drop slow for the ABV too, which I think is interesting. Yeah. Time for a sip. Let's do it. <laughs> mm. Wow. Hmm. Oh. I feel like I'm a down on the farm. I need yeah. to, you gave me some of your grandpa's whiskey that he made. <laughs> Do some cut. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. That's got a that's got a nice little kick to it, but it's not. Um, I love the fact that it's not. There's not minerality going on. There's no bitterness really. It's it's a nice spicy splash of sweetness and yeah, briny saltiness and pretty mm. well balanced. It seems like yeah, it arrived really. It's very full. It's very. I keep using the word grain, but you know what I'm saying. Like it's very, uh, earth, uh, you know, fresh cut, whatever forward, sweet. And then there's a nice vanilla. Like I'm getting a lot of kind of vanilla, vanilla caramel, which is that ex bourbon having its influence here. Nice prolonged development, actually, which is interesting. It doesn't get crazy complex, but it holds together really well. Um, and then, yeah, underneath, there's a little bit of that juicy fruit, kind of apple pear, and then the spice, as you mentioned. It's very balanced in how the spice hits. It's You definitely get uh, – it's not drying, but it's, like, assertive, right? And, and, and it's not even, like, a, a specific flavor. It's not like it's, like, oh, yeah, that's cinnamon. It's it, 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 it kind of just there. It's maybe just the youth of the whiskey. But if they somehow crafted this to like say, okay, this is a really youthful whiskey and the casks we're going to use are going to round that edge, they did it really well. Because you're not picking up ethanol. This does not taste like a five-year-old whiskey at all to me. Yeah, thankfully, I, th I think they were smart when they used that wood. They got whatever virgin oak cast they use are really, really solid. And with that, even with that you know, youthful whiskey, it, it cuts it like like – Kind of like when you're doing music and you want that higher pitched vocal to cut over the bass, you, you got to yeah. have that same concept with whiskey when you've got all this young, youthful whiskey going on. You got to cut it with something. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's got a nice bite, and I'm I'm so I'm so thankful that because I don't like the real oaky over oaked whiskeys. This one's got the right amount of of edgy oak in it to to not lose the spice and the fruit and all the nice sweet, like you said, the vanillas and the caramels and the toffee yeah. and all that are still there and it's not too much. Thinking about the finish now, I mean, it's holding on rather nicely. I'm getting a, it's, it's faint. Like there's vanilla butterscotch, a um, lot of butterscotch. And then like maybe a dark, a darker caramel, just kind of like, all working together, but it's at like a medium volume, right? This is the mid range. It's all kind of just rolling in. And then again, that you just, it's this freshness. It's so fresh. Like I just cut down, a, you know, or shucked a shitload of barley and threw it into a bin and you're smelling it as you walk by. Like that's, that's what you're left with here. And you want medium to medium long on the finish. It's, it's subtle, but it's there. Yeah. It's, it's got a nice, like a, a milk chocolate, 
Mm-hmm. No, and then it kind of goes into more of like a, a, I wouldn't say dark chocolate, but it does have like a, almost a, not as d- dark as espresso, but kind of like in between a, a coffee and, um, mm. but it's really drying to me. That's the only thing I'm not quite certain if I like about the finishes. It's really dry with that wood. That's that's my only iffy thing. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm not I'm not quite picking up what you're getting there. I, I'm not getting the Maybe a, the subtle hint of dark chocolate, but it's not very prominent. And also doesn't seem too drying. Um, but we'll, you know, we'll go in for another sip and then put some water on this. You know? Yeah, for some, I don't know why, but the, um, like the finish is definitely medium length. I'll, I'll give you oh, that one. It just dries my palate up for some reason. I don't know what it is. Maybe the spice level or something. But it's not overly spicy. It's not like it's, it hits you and you're like, oh, it's a Cory Vrecken or something like that. It's <laughs> it's definitely... Yeah, okay. The second sip, I'm getting a bit more of the dryingness. And it is, it's oaky. It's the oak, but it's not not oaky like in an over-oaked bourbon sense. I right. feel like the sweet notes are really like rounding it off a bit. But yeah, I see what you're saying on that. I'm still not quite getting the chocolate note, but it's still kind of landing a bit sweeter for me, even on the finish. But good now yeah. i'm getting that too it's like it's almost like if you took one of those pudding pops that had the chocolate and the vanilla at the same time <laughs> it, it, that's what it kind of reminds me the finishes uh, if, if you had one of those swirl chocolate vanilla pudding pops and, and yeah 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 but it, you're right the sweetness thankfully balances out the end of the oaky that the dryness is the only thing i'm kind of like oh man but it's not bad. It's it's a it's a it's a medium nice finish. Hmm. That's a tough one. A little water? Yeah, definitely. See what happens. I it's, have a sense that the water is going to bring out that oakiness even more, but we'll see. It's definitely an, a very enjoyable dram, and, and and like I said in the beginning, I, it's it's I cannot find a Benromic that I have not liked yet. They've always been pretty good. Yeah. No matter what type of you know, cask or year or uh, peat or not peat, this is a non-peated whiskey, right? Well, it doesn't say anything explicitly on it. I know that Ben Romick does have a little bit of peat in some of their stuff, and maybe it, it extends to all of their whiskey. I'm just not completely sure. I- I'm double checking. This supposedly is not peated at all, but but take that with a you know grain of salt. But I'm pretty sure that this one. And the fifteen are not peated at all. I know the peat smoke one is, of course, but <laughs> and I'm are? pretty sure the imperial proof one is as well. But um, I don't. It, the cool thing about these are you don't really need it for it to be in, enjoyable, which is kind of cool too. Yeah, I agree. It's got that the, the oak is enough bite to give you kind of a peat feeling, so you almost are getting peat without it being really peated, which is kind of funny how that works. <laughs> Yeah, mm. have a little. Dip one little dot here. So this is the with water. I'm gonna be really curious what you pick up now. I'll tell you this: that cherry note that you were referencing earlier. I'm starting to get more of on with water here. Nice it's not a maraschino cherry. It's that like syrupy. Yeah, syrup. it's not. A, it's not overpowering. Everything is in a really nice balance on this whiskey. Yeah, I got the the first thing I got on the nose when I went back after the water is that you're right. That cherry note to me is more prominent, and it's, it reminds me of over like an overall good quality fruit cocktail. Kind of like when you do yeah. with your pears and your yeah. Del Monte, you know, your decent fruit cocktail. And it's gotten sweeter to me. It's the the sugars yeah. have have been bumped up surprisingly and not the oak or not the spice which is different because usually you're right when you add water usually it, it makes a spice bomb out of a spice yeah, there's whiskey. almost a borderline maple syrup thing going on in this but it's just so fresh man like it it, it i don't know other words to describe it now i think that's what you get out of these more or or oh, i hate to use the organic term but it's true it's 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 these Scottish 
barleys that they're using in certain farms, they've got a, their own characteristics. That's why you see bear barley from Brooklady. Right, right. You've got the Scottish and the Isla and all that. I can't get over how sweet that nose has become after that job. There's a little bitterness in the background too. And again, I think it's like the, that tart grape thing right behind there. I, I quite like it. I'm trying to, I mean, mine turned it on. It's for some reason it, for me, it turned it more into like a giant pixie stick with a, almost like borderline cotton candy. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. mm. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go in for another. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a way different palette, too. Wow. Isn't it? Hmm. The spice is there. It's a, it's a little more intense, but not overpowering. The sweetness level is still there. And I'm trying to determine, like, it's almost got, like, the grapes have, have come more up front. Yeah. If there's two ways, it's it's sweet and tart. The tartness, I do get it now on the palate. Yeah. It, it's, like, right at the end of this, right before the finish. Yeah, a lot more for me again. That butterscotch, which I got on the finish, neat. A lot more assertive on the on the palate here. Um, vanilla frosting, caramel, like kind of like a. You ever had like um, a bourbon ball before? Yeah. So, speaking of the holiday season, <laughs> like a bourbon ball where they didn't put too much bourbon in it, so it's not overpowering. It's just kind of like there's a creaminess to it as well. That's what I think has brought more out after the water. Mm -hmm. I think I'm getting more of a cr overall cream slash vanilla feel to it. Yeah, but but those that spice level still there and still yeah, well balanced, which is really cool. This is a very cool whiskey, surprisingly, for being an NAS. And and what's the price point on this one? So this is in that like fifty dollar, fifty five dollar range. Not I, it, it does vary depending on where you are. Um, not crazy expensive. For fifty five minutes, that, I think that seems like a pretty damn good deal. I have yeah, to say, I, agree. I totally agree with you. God, I just can't get away from that unmistakable like freshness that that, that, fresh pot, that that fresh barley. It's like you, you know, somebody just rubbed a bunch of it in their hands and you smell your hand, and like all of the fresh sense of it are just assertive as hell. It's quite nice in that sense. You know, if I was going to compare this to something, I would compare it to like the, it reminds me of the Glenmorne G15 Cadbull Estate. If you take off, if you just add a little bit more spice to it, it, it just has that, that character. I mean, even almost like Glenallochy 12 to some degree. Wow. Do, do you prefer this with or without water? I'm curious. I think without, but... Um, it does, it does tame down. I don't know. I would have to experiment a little bit more with water. I, I do like how it came down a bit of the dryness, which I started noticing on the second sip. It was a little bit on the dry side, but again, I mean, this is a five year old whiskey. It, that's a, I was thinking the exact same thing with the, with or without water. I was trying, I was debating myself. I, I, I liked it before. I liked it neat. I did like a lot. Of, I mean, a lot of the aspects, even after the water though, too. Yeah. And I'll, and, and I'm, I'm debating on if the finishes a little less dry, maybe with uh, a couple of drops. I'm going to try it one more time with a couple and see. I'll just try one drop for now, and then I can always add one if it doesn't really change much. But um, also a little saltiness in it. Let's see on the finish. I'm getting a little bit of that salty note, sodium. Yeah, it's funny. It's like I'm gonna go back and eat one more time, just just to. Yeah. I'm debating on whether I think the dryness is a bad or a good factor with this because it's, <laughs> right, right. it's got a nice like sweetness to it and it's round. I'm not sure if it would be enjoyable if it wasn't dry as much. Maybe that's why it lasts a little longer. It's medium to medium long. 
Oh, man. Even though it's not complex, it's, it does have a lot of nuances to it. It's like, even though there's not like a ton of notes, right. there's a lot of, of, with the water, it's, it's so dynamic. It's a dynamic whiskey to me, I guess is what I'm looking for. Hmm. I wouldn't call it coffee, but do you see that it's almost, it's like, I guess it's that bitter, but yet sweet note you're getting. Yeah. yeah. No, I, 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 I picked, I didn't pick it up the first time I'm getting it more now. I just went back to it neat. And I, I don't know. I think neat is even with that spicier Oak note, like this is really quite good. It's solid. For fifty-five, I, I, I'd say yeah, it's I'll definitely buy. I'll do a quick price check just before we get into our kind of final thoughts here. Um, let me just double check. I don't recall exactly what I paid for it. Um, so this is this whiskey USD. Okay, yeah. So it's like in the sixty range. I, okay. I recall paying a little less. It's in that sixty range, sixty to seventy range. So it really depends. Um, I have seen it for less than that. But I think it's a fair assumption to say 60 to 65 is kind of like what you're looking at nowadays. I mean, I got this quite a while ago and, you know, it, uh, you know, how quickly things change. The good news is you can still get this new, and you can get the new version, which is supposed to be 46% non-chill filtered uh, for 55.88. Now, if you are going to get it now and not wait for it to get over here and you get it overseas, I would definitely recommend getting it with like five or six other bottles so you can make the shipping yeah. make sense because $61 to ship one bottle of whiskey is just absolutely insane. <laughs> Agreed. I mean, that's just crazy. But the good news is I'm so glad they kept it in the portfolio because I was afraid they were going to drop like the Imperial and drop the organic and the peat smoke. But the good news is all these things are still available. Thank God. Yeah, that's good because I, when I saw that 10, 10 Imperial, the old ones, sitting dusty on the shelf, I grabbed that without hesitation because I was like, I'll never get to try this again. So I'm glad to hear it. Well, they have – they call it one's a single cask. Um they're not like exact exchanges. It's got to be one of these two. If you go to their site, the, the new site, they've got it where they've got one's an, a single cask at 56.9. I think that might be a really close to the Imperial Proof. Mm. If it's not that one, then it's got to be this. Um, they have a, um, a, a cast strength vintage. This is like more of a batch thing, which I think is the Imperial one. I can't remember if they do batches. Yeah, but let me it, take a look. I don't tell, know if it was being a batch on this one, but um, yeah, tell this, me, this is the old Imperial Proof, 57%. Uh, it does not. Tell me this. This is the giveaway. One of them is a first fill Sherry Hogshead, and one of them is a, a first fill um, Bourbon and Sherry Casks. So does it say first fill sherry hogshead or does it say first fill? It, doesn't say. it says, you know, hand filled, hand weighed, hand stamped, all that. Um, it does have a light touch of smoke. It does. Yeah, this definitely has sherry. It's um, intense, richly sherry. Yeah, so this is a sherry, a sherry bourbon mix. Let me see if it says anything on the bottle. If it's a sherry bourbon mix, I bet you then that means it's the cast strength vintage is the closest thing at 57.2. These have vintage years, though, and batch numbers, so you kind of have to be careful about that piece. But uh, Yeah, it doesn't say. It just says uh, finest barley malt with a touch of peat smoke and sherry. So, yeah, this is probably ex-bourbon, ex-sherry, if I'm not mistaken. But, yeah. hmm. Let's see that. That's the extent of the info they give you. Well, there's a booklet in here, actually. Well, that's one thing. Maybe if I get a, my hands on the 21, maybe we can get our hands on the new cast strength vintage and see it, how it stacks up with that imperial proof you already have. If you're yeah, that would, be, that. that would be great. Um, yeah, there's a booklet here. I, I don't know if I want to read the whole damn thing, but it does seem to have more information, which is a bizarre place to put it, but you know how it goes. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm assuming this is an ex bourbon ex sherry with a hint of peat. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, what are your uh, so this is one of my my picks. So uh, what is? I'll let you go first on final thoughts and score. Very very nice. Uh, 
well-rounded, even though it's not a complex dram, it's a dynamic dram, which I really appreciate. And by that, I mean, it's, it's, you can with without water very enjoyable i kind of debate myself whether i like it better with or without water which is kind of a good thing when you're playing around with whiskey i do like that i do like the fact that i can just pour it and go in and not have to play around with it if i you know if i just want to go in and have a a sip it's um it's it's not any one thing as far as focused on like a cask or sherry it's it's straight up virgin oak well i'm gonna have to say it's definitely well above average so it's definitely above a three right away i'm gonna say this one for me is going to be a 3.5 it's 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 young but for it's above average a bit more than 3.25 for me so i'm thinking it's a 3.5 out of five for me man right on um so piggybacking on what Telex said, this is a young whiskey, five years old. Pour it in a glass blind, you wouldn't know it. Um, this is, I think, one of the better examples of my, while somewhat limited, nonetheless, like I have had experience with drinking some really younger spirits. Uh, this one, I think, is one of the best I've had. What's interesting about this is, yeah, it is not incredibly complex, but it is incredibly enjoyable. And I keep wanting to pour more of this in the glass. Um, at that $60 price range, yeah, it's a young whiskey. But as I said, I think this almost fucked the trend. When I think of other like really young whiskeys that I've had, you know, that I, I just don't quite match up in terms of the quality you're getting here. I think this drinks like a much older whiskey. It has enough dynamism. It's very bright. It's very unique. Um, this is a well-crafted spirit for sure. I'm going to go three seven five out of five. That's a that's 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 right on. I, I'm uh, I'm very 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 uh, happy to get to try that one without even um, getting the new new one because uh, it's always good to have an older version first if you can before you try. Yeah, your own. I think it would be fun to try both of those if we ever if we get the opportunity. That'd be fun. Yeah, this is this is a damn good pour, man. Um, I I'm continually kind of stunned as to how good it is given given you know the fact that it's probably chill filtered that it's probably has color that it's only five years old or five and a half years old like what they've been able to do here is just and at 43 percent i mean that's yeah, another thing that's incredible. amazing i mean you know, if this reminds me of anything it's it's kind of like a craig Alec right you get a little bit of that bitter sour very much very much like a third this is it would be a great mashup with a Kregelic 13 i think would be a really good head-to-head -head. And, and this one's got some some i do like the fruit of this one i think even though i like the spice characteristics of the Kregelic maybe a little more i like the fruit and vanilla in this one better yeah definitely definitely um i think they did everything right that they could with this and it's a testament, I think, just to their craft. Uh, this is, yeah, I'm impressed. Because it tastes like instead of 43, it, it could pass for a 46% whiskey, I think. It's got that much, I think, the oh, for sure. Oh, and, and sure. I mean, I think if you poured this for, you know, most folks who are, you know, have had, uh, spent some time with Scotch whiskey, I don't think most people would think this is, uh, this is a, a, a five-year-old whiskey. The other thing I would mention about this that has come to me a little bit late, this does remind me in profile a bit of like a Balvenie. Mm. Um, like I'm thinking of like specifically the Balvenie 12 Double Wood. While that has a little bit more assertive bourbon notes, the, the structure of it seems kind of the same. I will tell you this. I like this one a lot more than the Double Wood 12 because that to me that one was so – over yeah that, that was one with the oaks more in your face and yeah, i just yeah i just didn't like that one as much this one to me i love the crisp orchard fruit you get out of this one it's like i'm still tasting that tart apple me it's too, crazy man, yeah. man i might have to raise it to a 3.75 too <laughs> oh, <laughs> baby I, I was i was i was close i'm gonna keep it to 3.5 but it is All damn right. good <laughs> To you, uh, final score here on the Ben Romick Organic is a 3.75 out of Malt Muser and a 3.5 out of 5 from Telex to Whiskey Tech. So close. <laughs> um, yeah, we were, we were pretty close on this one. And, uh, 
you know, about 10 minutes. I'll get mine in the glass now. But uh, coming up next, we have another Ben Romick for y'all for our final hour of Whiskey Chat. It is uh, Ben Romick, 15 years old. Uh, really looking forward to Telix getting into this one. Um, I Again, I've had a couple drinks, but as you can see, not very many. And it is one that I have not actually had for, well, quite some time. So I'm looking forward to getting into this one with you. I had the new one pulled up. Let me pull up the old bottle to see if there's any differences with uh, enromic here, because uh, sometimes there are. Like we, we, the only difference we saw with the new and or old organic was the uh, bump of the ABV and the fact that they started saying it's not chill filtered. But that you know, with uh, one that he we just had could also be non chill filtered. They might not have just stated it on the bottle. Sometimes right, that right, right, right. Trying to find, I don't see the old one yet. Let me see if I can find it. I know they had one at some point there. Yours yep. has the candle wax look to it, right? Yes. That's what I'm trying to find. Maybe they didn't change the uh, makeup of it. And that maybe that's why they didn't put a new bottle in here. Yeah. One thing you do have to knock them for is like, despite how they're, they seem to be, at least on these older bottlings, so hell-bent on telling you about their, like, handcraftedness. They don't give you a ton of information about the whiskey. <laughs> that is frustrating. Hopefully, yeah. this is, it's 43%, right? Um, yes. So, and yeah, I be, the tail of the tape on the 15 here. And it um, should be ex bourbon and ex sherry, I think. That's Hopefully. probably right. I mean, looking at the bottle, I mean, this is what we're looking at. This is the... Uh, 15 year old Ben Romick. I mean, that is probably Sherry. Can you move? Can you put the bottom of the bottle for me? The bottom of the bottle, the the typeface, raise it up a little bit more. There you go. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Do, do you like the new look or the old look better? Do you oh, have a preference? No. The, the new look looks very much like so many other whiskeys that I kind of didn't like it, but I don't necessarily love this either. It almost looks like a bottle of wine. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I was kind of frustrated because I was having the same problem where the, the, the good thing about the old look I like better is that it looks more like tasteful to me. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the new look is like great. Mm, if you're trying to go for more like power in your face, I'm going to, make sure that you look at my whiskey, but it doesn't have any classic feel or any like um, grace to it. The old bottling to me has more of like a, yeah. a graceful art to it. The, the new one's cool as far as like, it definitely catches your eye and it's powerful, but it doesn't have anything that, that makes you feel like this is going to be like a classic dram. That's, that's where I kind of fight with the new and the old look. So they probably had the same problem where they were like, we're, well, we love our old look, but we're just not selling as many bottles as we wish. And we're going to have to make it where it, it pops on the shelf. And they did a good, they did a good job with that. But the style is kind of like in your face, fire alarm, kind of weird power feel to me. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, so here's the tale of the tape. Uh, ben Romick, 15 years old. Again, here's one more look at the bottle. This is the older bottle. Box looks like this. Uh, this is 43% ABV. It does not say anything about chill filtration or natural color again on its bottle. So we'll just have to assume it is what it is. Um, it does say that it is bourbon and sherry and a hint of peat smoke. So we can expect a little bit of that. They do like to talk about the handcrafted nature of it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and yeah, that's the extent of the information they give you. Let me just check. There might be a booklet in here that I missed. I don't know. Yeah, I'm looking too on the side to see if I saw anything. And it, they don't, on this particular bottle, even the new one, they don't have any uh, chill filtering or coloring information that I can find. Yeah, it doesn't say anything. Um, they are all about saying handcrafted, but we all know what that means. I mean, Tito's vodka is handcrafted, so what can you say? Uh, <laughs> Not a fan uh, of the Tito's, I take it? <laughs> no, I mean, they're great marketers. <laughs> Every cask is hand-filled, hand-weighed, hand-stamped, blah, blah, blah. Um, follows from the 10, longer maturation, smokiness, bourbon cask, sherry cask. 
So yeah, this is X bourbon X sherry. Um, no other information really when it comes to the uh, to the whiskey itself. So that's what we're looking at, forty three percent. Yeah, that one looks like that one hasn't changed in uh, X sherry X bourbon. So it looks like the, the the even though the bottle look has changed, the the make doesn't seem like it's been affected. Yeah. So a funny thing, I, I got to share this. Um, so we've been talking here about how these Benromics don't seem to share much information about chill filtration, natural color. So I'm going back again to the Imperial cask. This is the uh, the Imperial proof. This is the 10-year Imperial, 57%. Something I noticed. So, you know, I'm, of course, reading the bottle and trying to figure out what the hell's going on with this whiskey, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't say much, just like the others. But there's a booklet in this, as I was showing you earlier. And I just happened to notice is that if you go through the booklet, it says in the booklet that it is non-chill filtered. Oh. So literally, and this is probably the first whiskey I've ever run into this situation with. And it's like written here subtly. It's like literally here. It's like in a paragraph. Oh, wow. It says here, blah, 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 talking about do this. This whiskey has been bottled without chill filtration. And as a result, a completely harmless sediment may form. Like... Perfect. <laughs> they include it in the book. I mean, you would think they plaster that yeah. stuff on the bottle. <laughs> well, I mean, they're apparently doing that now with their new branding, but isn't that strange? I don't think I've ever seen a whiskey where, like, usually these booklets are advertisements for like the other whiskeys in their line, or hey, look at how you know some history about their distillery. In this one, if you didn't look at this, you wouldn't know. But it says right there uh, that it is. Um, Non-chill filtered, but you got to look in the book. This is quite strange. Even with they did do it for the organic, but even with the new one on what I'm looking at, they don't tell you if it's chill filtered or not. So they they're still very. They might be good with the packaging change, but they're not as good with the prominence of the ABV slash the chill filtering coloring yeah. stuff. What's up with that? Do better. Do better, Ben Romick. I mean, for for a distillery that's priding itself on how handcrafted everything is. Yeah, exactly. Andrew Page just said, yes, yeah, just put it in the box. I agree. For for, for a distillery that's so uh, uh, planting its flag in the sense of its handcraftedness, and they talk about handcraft, and we do all these things by hand, like, why would you just mention the box? Like, I got to look in a weird booklet that's smashed at the bottom of the box. It's just bizarre. I do wish that it was a, a law, a Scottish law that you have to put an in age. And I don't mind if it's only three years. That's fine. But you got to tell me. It, that should be the first change of the law. Tell me what the age of whatever the whiskey is. And if you've got 40 year old stuff in there and you've got three year old stuff, to me, you can put a three slash four, 40 or whatever it is. You know, that's fine with me. Um, have a coloring statement. Is it got E150A? Yes or no? Does it have uh, chill filtering? Yes or no? And the ABV, of course, should be prominent on the box period. If you had those four things in the law, man, it would make so many people happy, I think. Yeah, I hear you. Tell the Scotch whiskey industry. They, I think they know that uh, less, is, less information is more, according to them. And so hopefully that'll change someday. Let's start a petition. But uh, yeah, I, I totally hear you. Um, it's, it's very frustrating. And again, like this thing with this imperial proof, like the fact that I have to read a booklet and it's buried in there, which is like some seriously important information. If you're, here's what I'll say. If Ben Romick's theory is that they're trying to be a mass marketed whiskey like Glenn Livet, clearly it's not working. Because <laughs> how many, like we've had a chat tonight, not a lot of people have had Ben Romick. But then their marketing is about on their bottles is about how handcrafted it is and how we do all these things this certain way. But then they don't provide you the information that you would want other than if you go look in a booklet at the bottom and read six paragraphs of stuff before they're like, oh, by the way, this is non chill filtered whiskey. Yeah. And by the time you get to the booklet, you've already bought the bottle, which defeats what? the whole purpose of marketing. It's exactly. kind of weird. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, they need some help. I, 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 I don't know if they're, uh, if they're, um, as you were saying, their new branding uh, may or may not share a little bit more information. But it seems to me like Ben Romick could be carving out a niche for itself about being this kind of handcrafted, uh, old world way, a la Springbank approach. But they need to be a little bit more transparent about what's going on with their whiskey. 
Um, Daniel had a question. I mean, not Daniel. Uh, ben had a question about the Imperial as an older UK measuring system. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's correct. It's not like the same as U.S. proof. It, it it's British proof, um, but it is fifty seven percent. So you know, call it. Isn't it weird how there are billions and I th what is it? There are billions and millions are different. Like when you get up to the yeah. billion, billions and all that. I'm like, I'm like, how could they differ on that? Those kind of things, but they differ on just about everything possible. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. Um, I'm gonna run and get a little bit more water, and then uh, yeah, we're about top of the hour. We could jump into the fifteen. Sound good? Sounds great to me, man. All right. I will be uh, right back. All right. Let me pop in here. Let me catch up with uh, some comments with you guys. Really appreciate it. New look sucks. Soviet looking with that font in red. Yeah. I mean, I, one thing when you're, you know, my wife works in, in, in marketing and, and I, I talked to her about these things with the whiskey bottles and, I understand what they were going for here. If you do look at it on a shelf and you're looking most bottles and I know the reason I know this is I have so many on the shelf, but when you're looking at whiskey bottles, a lot of the colors are usually in the darker end. You could tell by like the art bags and the errands, the old Ben Romick bottles, the Deanston, the Aberlauer, the Longmorn, the Springbank, the Loch Lomond back there. A lot of them are all, they don't really pop. The ones that pop are usually are the ones that are more white. And that's why I think they went with that. And the red is a power color where it, it even makes it more stand out with a white background. So, I mean, science wise, I see what they were going for with that, but, um, you know, I do like, I prefer the, uh, the, uh, older one. Uh oh, let's see here. I think Malt's back. And <laughs> the old look sucked too. <laughs> You're crazy there. Uh, sorry. I must've clicked on something. You're crazy. Uh, Steven, <laughs> I like the old one a little bit. I mean, I don't like the colors maybe, but I don't know. I think the gold and that, the type was fine. I like the candle wax look, I guess, but Ralphie did a show recently using Venomic as an example. I think he boils it down to international marketing. Yeah, I think they're trying to uh, make their presence known with this Smoky 12. Ooh. They're not happy with it at all, it sounds like. I was looking at the Cast Strength 10 Venomic. Yeah, that is a great, great, great bottle. If you... Uh, any cast strength panoramic is going to be good. I'm telling you 15, the same color, except the red banner. Yeah. See you later, Gary. Thanks for stopping by, man. Really like this uh, piece. Smoke. Yeah. The 2000, I was lucky enough to get the 2006, I think it was, uh, but I'm sure the batches are not that different. I would think I'd be surprised if they were um, really like the, this, yeah, the 2008 piece smoke. But I like the tin better, which had a lighter touch of peat, but more rounded and balanced. Okay. I'll have to try the tin. I never had their basic tin, I don't think. I had the 12 maybe, but it's been it's been quite a while. Yeah, just put it on the box is what I say too. It looks like uh, malt's back. Let's see here. Possibly. There we go. Maybe. Oh. There we go. What's up? We were talking about the Soviet look of the uh, old bottle. <laughs> Uh-oh. He might have been frozen. Maybe not. The new, the new Ben Romick? Yeah, we were talking about the Soviet look of the, uh, of the, the new Benromic? Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. They have that like industrial kind of thing going on or whatever. It's such a, yeah, it's, it's, but I mean, I can understand why they did it. It's just that it's, it's kind of weird when you're trying to get, just get people's attention is what it boils down to. It seems like. <laughs> right. I mean, it's the same thing with the ball blur. Like I think that they, their new branding sucks as much as the new Ben Romick, but that's just me. <laughs> How do you answer a question like that? <laughs> Uh oh, I think Malt might have faded on us. You still there, man? Uh oh. He might have lost connectivity. He's been trying to get his uh, 
connectivity uh, sorted out with the lighting. I know it's causing a, a little issue. Oh, well, I think. Oh, we, we've got we've got we've got old and new. Let me get rid of that old Malt user. <laughs> Not sure what's going on here? Sorry about that. Uh, no, it's okay. The uh, how do you answer a question like this? <laughs> what's the question? What's got to drink after lava? Um, I mean, it sounds like don't feed the trolls, but that's with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Dustin. I'm sure Dustin has something. Uh, Something pretty delicious to, to sip on after that. I don't know. Chocolate lava cake? I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think of a whiskey that would piss him off, but I can't quite think of one. Uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, Compass Box Spice Tree. <laughs> there you go. Have 2005 edition. Tree. Flaming Heart have 2005 or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Have some Spice Tree, homie. So how's that going? <laughs> the Lecheg 19PX right. sounds pretty good, man. I, I, would, I would love to have a sample of that. He's a big fan of the spice tree, if I recall. So I think that I think that's the way to go. That's the that's the Talix and Mall recommendation. Get yourself a nice spice tree, sip on that thing a little bit. Yeah, extravaganza. Well, if you if you can go extravaganza, you know, by all means. But we're talking base level, brother. Yeah, maybe, maybe even a Johnny Walker Red. I mean, you want to get a little bit of palate cleansing sharpness after such a uh, delicate and or delicious and decadent dessert that you've been eating so you know by all means <laughs> let's take 10 for the first time two weeks ago how'd you like that then i bet that was a really good one. Oh I'll, yeah i don't see how you i don't see how you couldn't like it we'll put it that way <laughs> i guess let's get into our uh the next uh hour and see what we got going on here white walker only if you put the white walker on ice though man if you drink it neat we can't do it that way that's horrible stuff. I never even tried it, and I heard how bad it was. And you've eaten sugar-free, uh, low-fat lava cake. Is that even a thing? That sounds really <laughs> nasty. I don't know where you're hanging out, but you need to you need to read those labels. <laughs> White Walker's in the freezer. That's oh it, belongs. it belongs in the back of the freezer with freezer burn behind the 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 frozen peas that you haven't eaten in a year. Oh, maybe this. All right, all right. I can't believe that. Uh, yes. I, can't, <laughs> I can't believe people tried to drink that stuff. I, I well, as soon no. as I heard people like were horrified by it, I was I didn't even go there. <laughs> no, it's I you know, I mean, any whiskey that tells you you, you should it's better cold. Um, well, that says it all. Okay. Uh, anyways, then <laughs> Roman fifteen. <laughs> DH has got me freaking out. <laughs> All right. Fenromic, 15 years old, 43%, likely chill filtered, likely as unnatural colorant. It is sherry and bourbon. We don't know how much, um, but it is 15 years old. And there you go. All right. Fenromic part be two. Only first oh, fill casks are used at the distillery, so they should be first fills on both of these. Technically, I don't know if that's if that's the case with the old, but the new ones are they do state that. So we'll have to see what we think. I'm sure we between you and I, we could probably tell if it's going to be first or like ex mature. Kind of yeah, the the third fill. Hmm. <laughs> Nice sherry on the nose already. That's a good, good sign. And it is kind of a nice dried. I'm detecting a Laroso, I think. For sure. And it's dry fruit, big time. Ooh, there's a nice kind of like beeswax toffee thing, too. That must be coming in from the bourbon side. Yeah. Oh well, barbecue. I'm getting like a like a pulled pork kind of a feel now. Oh man, really great nose on this. I can even detect like the black pepper on the nose, which is not easy to do sometimes. That's interesting. I'm not sure I'm picking that quite up. I'm almost getting more like an herbal, like a dry rub. Yeah, like a dark. I was going to say like a think of yourself like a dark, a black pepper spicy note on the nose it's 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 the dry rub 
Yeah. It's dead on. Oh, oh man. Very barbecue. Uh, and the barbecue is getting more intense as I'm nosing it. You getting any smoke on this? Oh yeah, um, it's it's yeah. it's like um, I am too. It's not a peat smoke, but it's more of like um, just a, a, a dead <laughs> up <laughs> chipotle or like a, yeah, like a peat mesquite. Yeah, it's got a mesquite kind of a nose to it. Oh man, awesome nose! That is really good. There, this this reminds me of the imperial proof on the nose a little bit. Maybe minus the sherry notes, but those bourbon notes are, are really similar. Yeah, there's this nice kind of like zesty, salty, herbaceous spice to it, man. Really nice. Yeah, it, it is. It's it's like a dry rub type situation. It's looking great. Some you know what? Do you remember when we tasted that um, that Balcones brimstone? Yeah, barbecue. It, this is like a subtler version of that in certain ways. It has hints of that, doesn't it? It does. You're right. The one thing that's nice now that's coming in on me is I'm definitely getting some dark chocolate. Huh. It's getting a little sweeter. I'm getting more of like a cherry cordial. That's a wild, of, man. Huh? A lot of like dark stone fruit plum. Like, like overripe plum. There's not raisin, but it's like um, it's like currant or something. I don't know. Blackberry. Maybe really some, nice. Sharp berries. Maybe some figs too. And the nose on this is killer. Dates. I'm trying to see if I get any like. Um trying to go for like a cashew or walnut, but I'm not getting it. I'm, tr I'm trying to find something like that. Huh. That's the only thing it's missing is some sort of like nutty aspect. Oh, I, it doesn't need it per se, but it's just something that well, would make I, I what you're saying. Like, 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 like if it was a 21 or something maybe. You normally associate with like a, like a the dry fruit notes of an Oloroso, like heavy Oloroso. Uh, like this is it's it the dry notes are there, but there's also like dark, juicy red fruit. You know, like or maybe not red. It's more like it's plum. I'm getting like a combo between, like you said, the, like the current, the plum, and the like a really deep red. Not not just like yeah. a strawberry or raspberry, but more like a um, like a black cherry or something. Yeah. Very rounded fruit. It's got definitely. Also a it's also surprisingly fresh, similar to what the organic was. It's like there's like a nice kind of like effervescence to the whole thing, despite all of these complexities. Yeah, I think the white and black pepper is what's giving it its zestiness or something. Because to me, it's got some really nice spices just in the nose. I haven't even tasted it at all. And I can definitely detect a lot of good spices in the background there. All right. Oh, man. This is going to be. The nose is su surprisingly good already. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> wow. Okay. Hmm. For 43%, man, this is crazy. <laughs> right? It tastes dead up like a between like a forty six, not as as high as forty eight, but it's it definitely could easily pass for forty six to forty eight percent whiskey. I think. Wow! Really full mouthfeel. I can't get over the smoke level without it. Be, it's not peated. I, I, I double checked. There's no peat here, man. But it's got an awesome smoke level to it. It does say that there's a hint of peat, a touch of smoke in it, but it doesn't say peat. Yeah, this is not peated. Believe it or not, this is all. I think it's. I think these guys are using really good bourbon casks with uh, to give it that oak hit, yeah, and that you're getting that peatiness. I think from the oaky side of it, which is funny. God, that's glorious. <laughs> yeah. A lot happening here. 
the bourbon notes and the sherry notes are so well married here that like you really they're like simultaneously balanced and indistinguishable. Like you, you like they're they're just working off of each other so well. The vanilla and the dark fruit. It's like you get a nice sweet, but it's got depth. Dark then, chocolate too. Wow. Yeah, the dark chocolate. There's this again that zestiness. The there is a bit of spice, but it's much more rounded than it was on the organic, of course. But it's still there, and you are left with like a nice, like you just ate some good barbecue. Now, to me, this does have a really nice white and black pepper kick to it. Is it is it good for you? Are you down with it? Or are you kind of like, eh, it's a little too... Oh, good, okay. No, no. This is not Talisker level for me. Um, right. I was going to say, that's the only dram I could think of that would be higher white and black pepper kick content. Maybe Quarry Vrecken would be another one, but those are the pepperiest whiskeys I could think of. Yeah. This is this one's got it, but you're right. It's such a they're, they're both like right at the perfect level where you detect it, but it's definitely not taking away from all the other things you're getting that's going on. Even though that first one wasn't complex, this one has really good complexity, I think. Yeah. Because you're right, there's some there's some sort of herbal thing going on. I can't really get my hand around it. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm getting the same thing. I'm about to do another sip. Like I can't quite put my finger on what that is, but it's there. It's, not, it's like it's like you opened up uh, a thing of Penzi's dry rub and you're smelling it, and it's got like you know the kind of green herbs, and then there's there's the the cayenne and the other stuff that's in there, and. Yeah, it's oh, awesome. like, a, like a green chili. It's got like a green chili kind of thing. But there's something. Yeah, I'm, it's not a good. I'm, I'm not get, hitting the herbal part though. I don't. It's, is it basil? I don't know. It's hard to tell. It's not rosemary. It's not thyme. It's more on the basil side of herbs. But I'm trying to see if it's. Yeah, I see what you're saying with the sweetness. Oh man. That second, that second sip is just. Mm. Yeah, Glen Scotia is not a, a distillery I would equate to any spice that I can remember. Do you remember getting any? Yeah, spice? I agree. Um, yeah, th this is much spicier than anything I've than the Glen Scotia 15 for sure. But the interesting thing about Glen Scotia 15, and you may, I'll tell you when you drink it. I sure as hell didn't realize it. It's all ex bourbon. There's no sherry in that, as far as I've ever seen. And I'm telling you, if you ever drink Glen Scotia 15, the first time you sip it, you're like, yeah, this is ex bourbon, ex sherry, no doubt about it. Exactly. And you think it's Oloroso sherry, too, because it's so damn like good. That with treat, you know, what do they say in Britain? Treacle, like that molasses, dried honey thing going on in the Glen Scotia 15. Um, I would have, it had me fooled. I thought there was sherry in that for sure, but there isn't. This, this, on the other hand, you can detect it a bit more. So much just dark, again, blackberry, boysenberry. Like, I'm wondering if he was getting like the oak aspect off the cast that he was getting the, the spice from. Maybe that's where he's getting that. Because I was trying to think of what does he mean by spice? And I'm not sure if they're first fill bourbon. Uh, probably not, but they're really good quality bourbon casts they use in that Glen Scotia 15. Those are excellent because he's right. I I could I would have sworn on my life that that had cherry in it. Me too. Me too. <laughs> it is that yeah, great. I was with you the year last year, and for good reason. I it, it's phenomenal. Um, and I can tell you right now, you know, I personally have found like increasing interest in fifteen year olds uh, as finding that really that nice line between like decent maturation and still having a little bit of youthful vibrancy. I'll tell you right now, this Benaromic 15 is is up there with that Glen Scotia in some respects. Oh yeah, this is I'm, fantastic. I'm the I was thinking, let's like it's 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 right there. I'm trying to debate which one I like more, but this one, the more I'm the more I'm getting accustomed to it, the more I'm liking it. It's kind of it's going to be a tough one. As a, one thing I do get off this one that I do not get from the Glen Scotia 15 is I don't remember getting that really nice barbecue note no. on the Glen Scotia 15 like you do this no, one. definitely not. 
and this is i mean this kind of thing you only get to me like drams like the the our big grooves committee release had that oh hey that's a good that's a good comparison yeah yeah and I had like this SMWS bottle that was a Glen Scotia. Uh, they did it was a, like their campfire from a couple of years ago, but mm -hmm. that's the only two bottles that I can think of where I got that real heavy beach campfire kind of thing going on. And, and it, the, the amazing thing to me is they're doing it without any real peat going on, which is really crazy to me. But they yeah. they are pulling it off. It's crazy. Put a little bit more I think it says slightly peated here on the on the side, but I, it, it's it, it they're not putting in much in it if it, not enough to detect more than maybe like a three to four or five ppm. I'd say. I feel like you smell it. Like I just I got a little bit of my hands because I spilled and like I could it smells like it. Man, this is such a good whiskey. Maybe maybe that's the thing with these guys because uh, there are some of these guys that are really really protective of their recipes and stuff, but maybe the reason why they don't—I mean, they should tell us the color and chill filtering thing. There's no excuse for that, but maybe as far as like whether whether or not it's peated or how much peat, what how much of it's sherry, maybe that's kind of like part of their recipe. Smoke. smoke, and we do know that Ben Romick does make a, a peat smoke whiskey. I mean, I'm a, maybe there's a, just a little bit of peat smoke in this i mean you don't you don't detect it much i mean the the on the palate there is that kind of like bubbly effervescent quality which you get out of peat but it's it's really hard to tell if that's spice or peat mm. i think it is slightly slightly peated and uh one that this will remind you of you're in for a treat i snuck a little sip of that i told you about the kill home and slightly peated hogshead sherry yeah. and the slightly peated bourbon i haven't opened the bourbon one yet but i did open the the slightly peated hogshead sherry dude i think you're gonna really like that one and so i'm gonna put that those two in with the next um meetup and uh so down the road maybe we can do uh, a kill home and uh, show if you feel like it oh for sure Oh, this is so good, man. Thank you so much for sending both of these. This, oh, uh, you bet, you bet. I, I just can't get over how much of a fan of Ben Romick in general I am because the peat smoke was good. The Imperial Proof was was great, fantastic. Um, the Organic was good. This one is is right up there with the Glen Scotia 15. That's one of my favorite 15-year-old uh, whiskeys next to the Glendronic 15 revival. I mean, yeah, it's spring year 15 for me. Good, yeah. Great company in those drams, you know. Yeah, I'm going to go for a little water. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I'm sipping away. I better, I better save a little bit for some water. <laughs> I could drink this like clock. I'll tell you what, man. What's really interesting about this is like, these these guys, despite again the faults that we called out on like their lack of information, the fact that this is a forty three percent at this quality, they're basically just being like, yeah, fuck you. We know, exactly. we, know we know how to, we know how to pick good casks. Fuck you. Like we don't need to put this at forty six percent. They're right. I mean, we'll show, I we'll show you what what we can do with forty three percent whiskey. It's funny because usually I would knock a whiskey for not getting to forty six or forty eight percent, but I think I think you nailed it with these guys. They don't really need it to be that level because they are kicking ass at forty three percent and yeah. with and without water, which is the really amazing part to me. Wow, those, you when you said barbecue earlier, you hit the nail on the head. It is it's louder and prouder now with the addition of water. Oh, really? Oh, Isn't that weird how it brings it up? You would think it would tone it down, but sometimes you get like no, it brings it's it, kicked up. it up. It's kicked it up. It's so interesting uh, because yeah. you would think like so. Stephen Connor just mentioned that it's yeah they use Highland peat, eighty percent ex bourbon, twenty percent ex sherry, all first fill, which is what we were we were thinking earlier. But what's funny about this is that the bourbon notes are so subdued here. True, they're not, they're not dominant. Even at eighty percent, as as uh, whatever information Stephen had here, like that's just crazy. It did. It, I do like you said. It did bring the, the 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 campfire, but it also brought a lot of good sweetness in there too. Man, yeah. 
brought the sugars up. And it's funny because sometimes you get like a lot of spice level raised on the nose after water. And sometimes like with Benromic, I noticed that the general profile is you're going to get sweetness after the nose with water, which is kind of weird to me, but oh, man. I like it. Wow. It's just a great tasting whiskey, man. I mean, Benomics make, I'm not sure like what they've done to get their base core, but their base core in general is just so tasty. Wow. Even with the addition of water here, like on the palate, more of the bourbon notes are sort of the caramel vanilla, but it's soft, sticky and soft. And then you get, again, that nice, dark, dried fruit. There's some of that Christmas cake spice, you know, you're thinking like the, uh, not, I won't go so far as clove, but you know, you're like all spice, you're not mag. Some of that's coming through here. The fact that there's that the dried, the dried fruit notes are so assertive makes me realize that, you know, in order for an Oloroso cherry cask or any, any cherry cask whiskey to get the dried fruit notes, it, it takes a while. I mean, it's got to sit in the barrel and like oxidize and mature to get those notes. And so while this is a 15 year old, I wouldn't be surprised if there's older whiskey in this because I've had 15s, you know, in my own experience that I think didn't quite, you know, they were much sweeter on the Oloroso Sherry notes than what you're getting out of this. And so I, I, I do feel like while the bourbon maturation is part of it, like those dried fruit notes, even at, like Stephen mentioned 20%, perhaps in, in first fill, like, boy, are they assertive. And that is just, this is an incredibly well-crafted whiskey. That's amazing that they are able to get this type of, it's, it's to me, it's one of the most well-balanced whiskeys I've ever had because I was just thinking of this, the sweetness, the spiciness, the briny saltiness, the very slight minerality you might get, but it's it's not a like alkaline, maybe. Yeah, yeah. It's it's hardly detectable, but all the other stuff is is so well balanced with the spice, the sweetness, and like you said, the bourbon and the sherry notes. And I mean, you, you can keep like they've they've almost like purposely have built themselves two lists and methodically balanced them as they built the profile of this whiskey back and forth. It's crazy. Huh. I'm getting I'm a little bit of lemon lime it. with water too. There's a little bit of lemon lime. That finish just goes on. I'm trying to decide if I like it better neat or, or with water. I think I might prefer it neat just slightly. I like the sweetness of the after water though, which is really cool too. How do you feel about the finish on this? I definitely like the finish better with neat. And I think that's what's lacking only with the water i love the nose and the palate after water but the finish is seems like it took a bit away from it but uh that's interesting i actually feel the opposite i felt like the finish was a little bit more abrupt than i would have expected for what I, what how amazing the presentation was neat water seems to have extended it for me a bit um and i'm getting that subtle barbecue again the dry rub barbecue the malted milk ball, which seems to be a theme tonight, the vanilla caramel note. There's this slight citrus, like a very slight citrus note, the dry berries. There's you know the so much going on with this whiskey. You, uh, know, you know the citrus the, and the, the chocolate malted Whoppers thing is per yeah. perfect. I, like I, I get that that after, you got it from a real candy store, not from Walgreens. Exactly. I, I, I do get that after the, the on the on the finish. I'm just I'm just wondering if the only thing I think that I'm, I'm missing on the finish, then I didn't word it right, is like the power of it. My the intensity isn't as there as it was in the beginning, but yeah. it's not bad by any means it's uh it's a hell of a whiskey i love whoppers are one of my favorite candies and this is definitely like right up there <laughs> oh and there's still a little bit of that pepper pepper spice it's coming in on the oh man that's the part i love is the, the balance of the sweet the the, yeah sorry go ahead no, i saying that that's what i love about it this is the balance of the sweetness and the spice levels like you said yeah, the bourbon notes, I think, are more assertive with water here. 
um, on the palate. They weren't on the nose, which is what I was surprised by. But on the on the palate and into the finish, it's more bourbony. But the, that dry fruit stuff is holding its own. It's still there. It's prominent. Oh man! I mean, like when I think about it, in like it's still hanging on. It's just fantastic. Man. The white pepper is still kicking. And you're right after the uh, water that, that that it's funny because you're right. Usually you get the spice on the nose too, and Ooh. on this one it brought it down, but it brought it up on the finish um, with the spices. Yeah. Cumin. Hmm. A. I mean. Yeah, it's got this. <laughs> all I can say about this. So price wise, a bottle of Ben Romick fifteen. And this is where it gets even better. Ooh. All of Enromic 15, 80 bucks. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, this is around an $80 whiskey USD. Um, here's one more look at the bottle. Folks who maybe have missed it. This is the older bottling. I can't speak to the new one, but these are still relatively available. Well, Talix, what do you think? Final score, final thoughts. Yeah, I was just looking to see if they had these still a petite, and they they got the organic. It's kind of high there. They got it for seventy, but that's not terrible. That's a mm -hmm. that's a decent. I mean, I'd still pay seventy for that whiskey probably. Uh, that's yeah. probably my top level. But I probably would do that. And then for this fifteen, they got it at a uh, hundred, but they have it on sale, so it's probably for like eighty five. I'm thinking somewhere around there. Yeah, so let me just do a quick. I'll I'll also just run a quick. Uh price check just to see i mean like i said this is around that 80 dollar range yeah i'm seeing 75 73 74 um not I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm you might be finding it upwards of 90 these days but still with the way prices are that's a good decent price for a 15 year old whiskey i'm seeing it between basically 75 and 95 i might send you my um my list to see if you can get some price checks for me because your prices are better than mine sometimes yeah I, I did send uh, Tom the list uh, that we talked about with the uh, Ben Nevis and the uh, the Tormor and stuff on there. So uh, I did find that they did ha already have some, which is really good news. They had the um, the um, what was it? We can go back. Well, I'll go, I'll talk about that later, actually. But uh, I'll look and, and bring up the email that uh, he responded back and. They have a bunch of the ones that we were looking for, so that's good news. Oh, here we go. Um, you still there? Mm -hmm. They have the uh, Bunnahaven 25. They've mm. got the uh, Edgerdower 12, but that's the oldest possible I could get my hands on. They don't even make anything, I think, older than that uh, distillery. I think we're 11 single casts this weekend. Cool. Okay, uh, they have a link with fifteen, which which I'm I'm looking forward to trying because I, I only knew they had a twelve, but I, I did was able to find a fifteen link with which should be uh, fun to try. They have the uh, new old Pulteney eighteen, which shall be fun. They have a Tamon the eighteen, but I'm gonna have them look and see about the thirty to see what the price is because I heard it's not too bad actually for the uh, Tamontans. So we'll have to look at that one as well. Um, I did send them some other ones to look for. Uh, I want I'd love to get my hands on a Benevis 21 uh, distillery uh, bottle, but I'm not sure how easy or hard that's going to be. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, there's this maple note coming through too, like pancakes, <laughs> like pancakes with a little maple syrup on. That's that sweet. I was wondering what the butteriness. That yeah, the butteriness. It has like a buttery pancake. Um, undertone i think i think that's what makes their 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 basic make so good because i think i get that same similar note out of their imperial proof if you think about it it's always got this real nice thick sweetness but yet they're able to round it and balance it with other things where it's not cloyingly sweet yeah mm. i'm gonna get me a bottle of this i think just for myself uh after uh I'm going to still try to get that 21 for us on the road, but if uh, seeing this, uh, I might actually, if you could get it cheaper than the. I'll look for it for sure. The 90, yes, I'll see if you can get it maybe for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, ma'am. It was my pleasure. It's your, uh, you get first stabs at final thoughts, final score. I'll take you up on that, Stephen, later. We'll talk about that on the side. Wow. You should, oh, man. Oh, this was. Is, 
excellent. And I liked it a lot even, and I like that first one. I like this one a lot more. Um, love the fact that they're going, it sounds like, uh, even though they're not specific with the color, I wouldn't be surprised if there's no coloring really involved with it. It seemed like it was pretty legit with the, uh, the Sherry. I love the fact that they use first fill on both sides of the coin. Um, I wish they did tell you how long, like if it was 12 years in bourbon and, uh, you know, three or five, whatever years in, in Sherry or that kind of thing. But for what it is, it's got a great nose before and after water. Same on the palate. Finish um, after water. I might not have been much of a, of a fan, but I still liked it a lot. And I do agree. It brought some really nice spices out on that finish afterward, too. Oh, man. This is definitely at least a four. I'm... I'm thinking it's going to be hmm, I think I'm going to go 4.25 on this one man I, I, it's it, it could be a little more complex it could be a little better as far as like letting us know about the craft part of it but um, as far as all the nuances and the notes and the it, it's another dynamic dram I think that's what's great about the distillery they're dynamic in general they uh, know how to balance a whiskey. They can make a 43 taste like a 46, 48. Yeah. I, I think a 4.25. Right on. Um, yeah. I mean, I think to kind of, yeah, just to dovetail on what you said, man, um, this is a testament to quality cast maturation. Um, I feel like, much like we saw in the organic, the ABV and age belies the quality and complexity you're dealing with here. And the fact that this is 43% and coming through at this level, I think this could rival older age whiskeys at the same ABV easily. This proves that high alcohol which of course always usually means high flavor isn't the only factor that can come through. And they are not hiding the fact that uh, they know what they're doing because they're bottling this at 43% and in a way almost daring you to tell you that it's bad. And it's not. Um, this is a fantastic whiskey, tons of complexity. Um, I really appreciate everything that this thing is bringing to the table. I'm, I'm really almost stunned at how good this is, um, considering other 15s I've had at this price point. I mean, I, I can't imagine. I mean, I'm thinking about Springbank 15, which is one of my favorites, which is double the price of this, uh, or at least, you know, 50% more. Um, I think this is almost unrivaled in the 15 age range for what you're getting here. Um, there's a short list of ones that I think probably are right there with it, including the Glen Scotia 15, which was talked about earlier. Uh, this is a testament to craft. It's delicious. I wish they were a little more transparent. I do think that while you found it a little bit better with water, I found it a little bit better, or without water, I found it a little bit better with water, particularly on the finish, which I think is the weakest point, but it's not weak at all <laughs> comparatively. Um, yeah, I also am going to go with a 4.25 out of 5 out of this. I think this is a must-buy whiskey especially at the price it flies under the radar i would go upwards of a hundred dollars for this easily um it's that good and don't and and while i normally uh abv is the first thing i check uh ben romix got me questioning that theory with this one um this is an absolute stunner i uh i can't say enough about it if you can find the older bottling which is the one that we're vouching for um do it uh, but i'm very eager to see what their newer one is and yeah this is a good this is a damn good whiskey uh grab it if you can 4.25 out of 5. yeah one thing i noticed is that whiskey exchange is calling this their whiskey of the year for 2020 even this is oh, really? the, the new bottle that we're talking about but I, I tell you what from looking at the notes i don't think it's any different because we're talking the same abv the same uh sherry and, and bourbon ex sherry you know ex bourbon, bourbon cast profile um it's it's uh it, it's always got good marks uh new and old bottle it looks like so i would definitely check it out either way um 
definitely go for the older one for price purposes because if you try to order the new one online they're going to try to charge you 65 dollars plus you know the 61 dollars to ship it and all that so you got to be careful about that piece but uh yeah, I mean, if you could find it, I mean, like you said, for eighty to ninety dollars, it's a it's a definite, definite easy buy. Um, and with the Glen Scotia fifteen, I, I, I'm I'm struggling to, to try to determine which one would win. I, I think it'd be a perfect shootout show for anyone anyone that's watching that's a whiskey tuber. If you have a, a either one, even the old or new Ben Romick fifteen, and you've got a Glen Scotia fifteen. Please do a shootout show for us and let us know what you think, because I'd be really curious to watch that one myself, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, I definitely would. I mean, Ben Ro uh, Glen Scotia 15 was my whiskey of the year for under $100 last year, um, and I still think it's probably probably the best 15 that I've had. Um, and again, obviously, like there are more factors than just age, uh, maturation, what it's in, what it's not. It's an ex bourbon, it's ex cherry, blah, blah, blah. I just, I think it's one of the most well-crafted whiskeys that I've had. And the criminally cheap price of $70 or less for that is just unrivaled. Uh, but this one is right there, man. I mean, this is, again, you pour this blind for anybody who's got a good sense of whiskey and I don't think that anybody would sneeze at it. It's just really that good. Um, I can't say enough about it. It's fucking fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking yeah, fantastic. I know you know that pretty much because I'm surprised at how good it is. I, I thought yeah. that coming. Yeah, the 43 percent. You know, you know, I, you think about some other whiskeys, right? That are much more expensive than this. Again, that are in that 21 year old range. Um, I know you just got one, but like, you know, Glen Goins, 43%. I'll be real curious. And it might actually be fun to, uh, you know, think back on this when we're tasting the Glen Goyne 21. Um, there's a couple other, you know, 21 year old whiskeys out there that might be interesting to uh, think about comparatively. But I'll tell you, this thing punches above its weight in every respect. That's true. It's it's. I'll, I'll be honest. When we were going to this show, I was wondering like if it was going to be like how good these were going to be because, and I, I, I the good thing was I was already already feeling comfortable because of the how good the peat smoke and the uh, imperial proof were, and this has just solidified my love for Benromic in general. Uh, quality taste wise it's like yeah they could be better on their craft as far as like letting us know what they're doing but uh as far as what you get out of the bottle and for the price that they're charging holy shit <laughs> it's an unbelievable yep oh my keep your eyes out for this i'm gonna i'll probably do a full review of this one early next year and i can tell you already in terms of 2021 whiskeys i have a hard time seeing this doesn't pop into my uh top five it's just freaking great yeah i mean I, i've been trying a, a lot of different things this year too and uh, from a lot of different distilleries and uh, some familiar and some some not so much and this one yeah is definitely going to be way up there if not at the top because uh it's really hard to, to battle a, a dram like that because it, it, it checks all the boxes including price which is really really rare nowadays with whiskey <laughs> yeah i agree with you um i mean and and i think you know we're we are just heaping praise on this whiskey so <laughs> i'll add one more note like we continue the trend the fact that with the way prices are going up with the demand the tariffs all of the shit to find a whiskey of this quality that's still floating in that under hundred dollar range, like it's few and far between these days, man. It really yeah. is. And you know, I, if any, if we do anything to to try to be of service, it's to test some of these things out and and give you guys our two cents. And I hope that this one has been. Uh, I hope this one is now on the radar of a lot of folks because I think you will not be disappointed in the quality of this whiskey and. Yeah, I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, I was. I remember seeing Trooper say this that it made him want to start looking for the Romic line. Yeah, and, and, it, and it doesn't matter if you find old bottles or new bottles at this point. 
it's going to be good no matter what you get. I would stick to the older ones for now, if you can, before we get our hands on the newer ones, because there might be some sort of differences with some of these. But uh, mm -hmm. I can tell you that any old bottling that we, I've had, and we've now we've had four or five of them, they're all damn good. It's, yeah. it's crazy. It kind of reminds me of Aaron's new line. It seems like whatever Aaron's doing now, new wise, is is always pretty damn good. From what I think you've had too, right? Yeah, I also have the quarter cast bothy, which I should get you a, a sample of, so we can do that one. I'm going to pour myself a little E. H. Taylor Rye to uh, spice things up as we uh, head into the twilight of our show tonight. But um, yeah, I uh, the quarter cask bothy is a really interesting one, man. Um, I'm looking forward to, uh, I'll, I'll bottle one up and share it with you. I appreciate it. I just poured a little bit of that old, uh, Jura 21 that we did. Uh, that was really a surprising dram. That's the one where I, I absolutely hated it. The first time I tried it through the neck pour and even through some of the half of it. But once I got it oxidized in that spice really toned down, cause that was one of the spiciest drams I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Finally kind of melded out. Not the best 21 I've ever had by any means, but it, it got a hell of a lot better because it went from like a point, like two five, literally, to like a 3.5 just with a lot of time. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? So one thing I wanted to ask you, um, Daniel says, welcome to Team Rye. Hell yeah. Uh, the E.H. Taylor Rye is quite delicious. Uh, we should We should do a rye night. Um, I have a 13-year-old Canadian cast strength rye and the C.H. Taylor. That would be a lot of fun to do. I also have a Willet rye we could do. Um, but if it's cool with you, uh, I'll give a little preview of like what folks can expect for the rest of the year for us and then going into January. Sounds good to me. So next week, y'all, um, we're going to be sticking around the Speyside region and checking out Enoch. We're going to do Enoch 12 and Enoch 18 years old. Um, I will be gone on the 22nd, so we won't, uh, I won't be here for a holiday show just because of Christmas travel. But when we get back, we're doing Lafroig 18 years old to close the year. We are doing Lafroig 18 green cask or the green tube and Lafroig 18 white tube head to head. And then in the second hour, we're going to be doing Lafroig 25, which is going to be a fantastic way to close out this ridiculous 2020. We're going to go with some high quality Lafroigs. And then, yeah, going into January, uh, we got McAllen 12 and 18. We're going to do a head to head of the Ardbeg Blacks and then also do uh, an Ardbeg 10. We're going to do Glen Morangy Malaga Cast, Tail of Cake, and 18. And then we're going to, you know, in the middle of the dead of winter, we're going to do a little rum night. We're going to do Glenlivet Caribbean Reserve. Glenlivet, uh, 21 years old, and then uh, a four-square exclusive cast rum tasting. So we got a lot of good stuff coming up. Um, if folks haven't subbed yet, do subscribe to Telex the Whiskey Tech. Give us a thumbs up on this channel or on this video. Um, we've been doing this basically since COVID started, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. We're going to continue this into 2021, and uh, definitely hope you all can join us and hang out uh, as we continue on our whiskey journey together. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, it's from the mug at uh, Gawkin. Good to see you, man. Uh, he enjoyed the Jura Zone 16. Yeah, we when we look uh, look for our Jura show that we did, we were in search for the lost Jura, and we did a 10, the 16 Jura Zone, and the uh, new 21. So check it out on the side if you haven't already. Good to see you again. Gawkin's an old uh, buddy from the uh, – I met him over nice for dummies. To, uh, thanks for stopping in. Nice to meet you. And bring on the frog for real, because uh, yeah, definitely be here for our um, our uh, twelve twenty nine show. That's basically going to be our New Year's show, and uh, that those Lafroys are going to be fantastic. I only had one or three, but I know the one is extremely good. Now I can only imagine how good the other two are going to be. <laughs> we got the green two, we got the white two, we got a Lafroy twenty five. Uh, yeah, we're, we're going we're going high end we like to try to keep the first hour to something super accessible but it's the end of the year and come on let's all be real yeah it's been an absolute nightmare so we're gonna we're gonna kick it out in style with some serious lafroigs most of these guys thankfully have uh, Lef uh some old 18s in the shelf too so they'll really? 
hopefully they'll pop one open with us and and, and you never know some of these i, I think steven might have a, an old green uh, label uh white label and a green label somewhere in his little stash but we'll have to see <laughs> yeah 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 that'll be awesome hopefully yeah, it's gonna be fun and then you know we got a ton of stuff planned out going into 2021 we're gonna be checking out glenn going teapot glenn going 21 balvenies Lagavulin 18s and 16s. We got a ton of stuff going in, scheduled out well through March. So uh, Tasty Tuesday, Talix and Malt Show ain't going anywhere. So um, excited to hang out with everybody going into the new year, which will hopefully be a lot uh, better <laughs> in many respects than what we've had to win this year in 2020. Yeah, hopefully we'll be able to do – we won't be able to do it a whole lot because we are kind of not too, too far, but far enough to make it where we might be able to do like a, a in-person show post-COVID maybe at some yeah. That would be kind of cool to meet up and just do like a, a Saturday day or show or something, you know, off the wall if we feel like it. I usually try to get out to uh, his neck of the woods uh, once a month or so anyway. So we'll we'll try to make it happen after we all get vaccinated though. <laughs> Yes, for sure. I cannot wait. Me neither, man. I'm, I've been I've been drooling at the UK. Uh, I see all these people getting vaccinated. I'm like, hell, where's, where's, right. where's the <laughs> it's coming? Everybody, sit tight. Keep keep it keep it keep it tight. Keep your masks on, man. We're we're almost in the clear. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, uh, it can't come soon enough. I can't wait. I'm uh, definitely looking forward to getting out and actually going inside some whiskey shops. It's one thing I miss, like when I was doing my radio thing, it's always fun to go out to those rural areas and find that really nice sized whiskey place in the middle of nowhere. That's got like some good 18, 21, some off the wall casks that you don't see yep. or something. And uh, yep. I love just going in and seeing what old dusty thing I could find. <laughs> Yeah, totally, totally. When he brought that Tobermory Twenty One for me today, he's like, "Well, I got, I've got it, but it's really dusty." And I'm like, "Dude, I like the really <laughs> dusty old stuff that's been sitting for dust. forty years, please." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna show it to you. This is this is a really cool, uh, just kind of like a, a little preview. <laughs> it's like a look at how old school this twenty one year old. Oh my god, it's fluorescent. What is that from? Like the the Belle Biv DeVoe eighties. <laughs> It feels like it. It thank God. Here, here's a good preview on this. Like, like this is a 21, right? This is <laughs> Mazania cask at 57. I'm sorry, 53.8 percent. So, oh man, that's going to be fun. 3.8 percent, and it's a 21 year. And I was lucky enough to have a little snippet of this at a whiskey tasting. We are in for an absolute treat with this, man. I'm telling you. I can't yeah. wait to open up that. It's an open now, but uh, I'm I'm looking forward to getting you your uh your stuff soon. Uh, I think Saturday we're gonna meet up, right? Yeah, Saturday. Uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll post a pic on Instagram of our COVID friendly whiskey swap. If you guys if you guys aren't following us on Malt Muser Whiskey Reviews on Instagram, he's uh, uh or I'm Malt Muser Whiskey. You're uh, just Telex Whiskey Tech. Yeah, I, I, it should come up as Telex. I think it, you might have to put Telex twenty one twelve, but it's Telex the whiskey tech pretty much in general. There you go. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna do uh, another whiskey swap. We uh, we do this every about what month and a half, two months. We go meet in some uh, undisclosed location <laughs> on the uh, eastern seaboard of the United States and uh, hand off the uh, uh, unmarked bags of. Whiskey samples. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm pull it off for you right now, brother. Let me tell you. And I'm going to add the E.H. Taylor to it tonight and that uh, Canadian ride for that matter. So uh, it's going to be bursting at the seams. It'll be fun. <laughs> I, know I've got, I know I've got 11 for you, but I'll try to throw it a couple more in if I could find a couple extra goodies to surprise you with if I can. Yeah, yeah. I haven't even started bottling yet. That's going to be my next few days. I'm going to be just doing my crazy magic that I do with the bottles and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny. When we met up, uh, I do my radio activations at state parks and whatnot. When we did the last one, it was funny because we both had these little boxes and we pulled up. And during COVID, there's not a lot of people out and about anyway. So we pulled up in this parking lot and we're like doing the shuffle and we're both looking at each other thinking, hey man, what's up? Right now for this stuff because it looks so sketchy. <laughs> yeah, we need like hazmat suits. I mean, we basically were like, you know, handing kilos to each other according to anybody 
who didn't know it was up. They were like some strange drug deal. Like, no, man, it's just whiskey samples. They got with my antenna. Look, my, my car looks like it's yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot, so it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was a lot of fun, man. Um, I want to put more antennas on it so it looks more legit next time. <laughs> You're looking like a fucking state trooper rolling up, dude. I'm not sure I'm gonna want to get out of the car. <laughs> thankfully, it's, uh, <laughs> thankfully, it's a silver Xterra. Oh, yeah. It was like a black. I mean, my vision would be, have like an all blacked out like SUV that's all like Mennonite version that's all blacked out. That'd yeah. be awesome, man. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be fun, man. Yeah, so we got a lot of good stuff coming up, y'all, and. um you know, just to reiterate, you know, this is this is fun. Telex and I have known each other for a few years and and definitely enjoyed sipping whiskey together, but it's it's only fun because we get to share it with y'all. And uh, you know, we're heading into the holiday season of a hard year and like just deeply appreciate each and every week folks showing up, chatting, building community. It's been great. And it's probably been more than we ever thought would come out of this. And so Super appreciate everybody, man. And uh, I hope everybody's staying safe and gets to spend time with loved ones, quality people in their lives as we head into this season. Um, you know, we'll keep the whiskey chat going. And uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, the next couple of weeks before we close the book on this ridiculous year. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that Enoch show on the 15th because uh, we've been mm -hmm. 24 and fell in love with the 24. And I've had a couple, I've had like a couple peated versions. One, one I wasn't into, but one of them was really good. So I can only imagine that this, this 12 and 18 are going to be solid. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And there's a new Enoch peated whiskey coming out. Um, or that is out already. It's called like Pete Hart or something. It's some like heavily peated Enoch. I've not been able to find it anywhere, but. You know, when, when I'm when I drive down to see you Saturday, I, there's no way I'm not stopping at at least one or two places in Delaware to, uh, you know, just peek around, take see, a little look. Yeah, you never know. I like the I had the flouter, which is a peated version. I did yeah. not like the style of the peat that they used, but the cutter one was really good. So I'm not sure if it's like that organic barley versus you know scottish versus isla versus different types of barley or if it's more of an actual type of peat bog difference but uh, i will tell you that that uh, i hated the flounder but i love the cutter so hopefully this new peat heart is uh, and i have heard of that one hopefully yeah. that one's got the one that i like <laughs> we'll have to see yeah for real for real yeah i i if if i ever see it i'm buying it on site i mean i'm a huge anak fan um so, as we're getting close to the top of the hour, Telex, I gotta ask you. Uh oh, it's been a it's been a, a year in whiskey for sure. Uh, we'll just say a year. Um, any any uh, you know breadcrumbs you want to drop as terms of maybe Telex's favorite whiskeys of the year? Is there anything in particular that maybe escalated to your top uh, five whiskeys that you've maybe had this year? I'd love to hear about it. And maybe the folks in the chat want to share some of the whiskeys that they've had this year that are kind of like, uh, you know, uh, the 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 mind blowing experiences. Yeah, before you guys jet, tell us your favorite whiskeys of the year so far, if you can think. One of the stands out for me, big time, was that Aaron Twenty One man. As far as like a. Uh, compared to that Ben Ryan 21 and other ones I've had that Aaron 21 stood out. And I'm so surprised because it's such a new whiskey that, um, uh, and I don't, th even though they had a previous 21 year, I don't think it's the same stuff. If it is, I'd be surprised because I think they do it in limited batches on a yearly basis, but they only do like uh, a couple thousand bottles. Um, but that one stood out as a, a, a really, really good one. Um, I also remember, um, enjoying the um some i mean some of the old floor and fauna bottles uh, like the blair athel were really stood out as, as being good in general but um i have to say that so far um the big standouts were the uh those new kilhomans that i i tried i can't wait to get my hands on yeah. the you so you can try and see tell me what you think of those uh, the tamd 15 was decent but that that Benomic 15 man that that is probably gonna be in the top three for this year for sure wow. there you go right on man yeah i mean i've i've had 
some really good ones too. I haven't decided yet on the format. Um, as I was saying on my um, on my happy hour, I'm going to do an early release to some of my Patreon supporters of my top whiskeys of the year. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a top five or if I'm going to do like a a top one and then uh, honorable mention for like bourbon, heavily peated, sherry, whatever. Not sure what I'm going to do yet, but little sneak preview of some of the whiskeys I've had this year that I think are going to be in the running. Uh, Deanston 2008 red wine Bordeaux cask. Mm. Um, absolutely mind blowing whiskey. I still have half a bottle, which is, I don't know how, uh, that one is going to be making an appearance for sure. Uh, no doubt about it. Um, also a knock 24, uh, absolute killer whiskey. Great price. Uh, I'm going to have a hard, I'll be hard pressed to, uh, to, not include that as one of them because it the combination of the price and the quality has just been freaking phenomenal um you know uh the other one what, what other one should we share a little sneak peek about um huh well teapot dram speaks for itself so we don't we don't even need to include that um you know uh while this ben romic 15 is is in the running no doubt I think the other one that I would mention, just just to uh, to add it to like, and I don't know where this is going to land, is the Springbank Fifteen. Mm. This is a um, this is a little bit of an older bottling, but this was one of those wow experiences for me this year. That as you go on your whiskey journey. I think in some ways you increasingly have less wow experiences. You know, it isn't like those first times you had the first time you had Nougatal or the first time you had, you know, whatever. Uh, this one really, really blew my mind. So, you know, uh, I think I think uh, an appearance from the Springbank 15. Oh, the other one, Red Spot 15 Irish. Uh, amazing. I think. You know, those are whiskeys that uh, may be showing up in in my video, um, and I'm really looking forward to doing it. It's been an exciting year just in the amount of stuff we tasted. I mean, the stuff that you and I have been able to share has been absolutely amazing. Um, and, you know, you increasingly you come across a bottle here and there that just blow your fucking mind, and there have been a few. Uh, on the bourbon note, I'll just add – Elijah Craig B520 barrel proof 12 year. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see how it all shakes out. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, putting that video together. And it looks like we got some good folks uh, sharing some of their favorite whiskeys already. Thank yeah. The, uh, for, uh, Daniel's uh, Edradaris 10 cast strength. That sounds glorious. I, I'd, I'd love to get my hands on a cast strength version of Edradaris. I, I do have a 12, my eye on, on their 12 year old, which is one of the oldest ones I could find. But uh, I'll see if I could find a cast strength one as well at some point. The 15 Glen Scotia, Kinter Rabon 12, The Lord. Oh, great. Yeah, great. The Lord, Lord. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. The Rosso and Bourbon. I agree on, on, on those. Yeah, uh, the the old the older batches like I had the fifties and sixties. Those were solid. I didn't like the ones after you once you got past the sixties, but they could they have, might have newer ones that have gotten better. Uh, but my favorites were from the fifties to the sixties. It had a really good clove uh, Christmas cake fruit cake thing going on. Yeah, we should maybe throw together an opera Lauer show one of these days. That would be cool. I'm, I'm the options we had. Yeah. I've only had the uh, the 18, the Abana, and um, I might have had the 12. I don't ever had. I don't think I ever had the 16 before. Great picks from Silverlock too. Yeah, yeah. You Hope everything's well with Silverlock. You can't go with Octomore, man. It's crazy. The cutter, yeah, it's 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 pretty good. I like that one a lot better than the. Uh, than the uh, flouter. For some reason, the flouter. The Kabanak was decent. It's like an orange dream sickle. It's a uh, Binohaven that's got yeah. like a heat to it. It's the only thing that I didn't like about that one as much was the finish wasn't there for me, but everything else to me was uh, was solid. And if you liked it that much to put on your list, then I definitely would check it out. Yeah, the 64 and 65 should be pretty decent one, I would say. Great picks, y'all. I mean, it sounds like everybody's had to get their chance to taste some fabulous whiskey this year, which is what it's all about. Have you had any of these? 
Uh, I've had an EH Taylor barrel proof, but not in the last few years. I have not had the new BTAC Weller, no. Okay. Uh, once I go back, to, I'm going to head back to Milwaukee for Christmas for a while, and my brother is a big bourbon head, so I'm sure he probably has a BTAC or two. Like this already. Around, um, yeah, sitting around that I'll uh, get to taste, so, you know. I, I, I leave that to him. Oh, yes. Yeah. Steven's bringing up the big, big, crazy guns on these, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Damn. Poor He's, he, I'm, I'm down with that because I've been lucky enough to no, have hate, a- my friend. You're a, you're a modest man, uh, and you carry a big stick. We, we appreciate your candor, and uh, you have a lot, uh, a lot of great whiskey, and we'd love to hear about it. You've shared samples with us. You're good people, man. I feel Those- you. Those are solid tastes. I'm not sure if I had exact, exactly that version, but the Port Ellens I've been lucky to try, man, are absolutely great, as, and as well as those Glenro, uh, the Glentronics from a long time ago, those single casks are unbelievably good. For real, for real. I haven't had any of the real old Glengoin stuff yet as far as, like, uh, single casks. That is that is on my radar, but the, the Balvany Tune was one of those where – I was, I'll, I'll have to say, I, I don't know what exact version, I think it was like a 1509 or something, but I just wasn't wowed with it as much as a lot of people were. But uh, I think the problem was it was one of those whiskey expo things where you're rushed in and you get the, the literally the bottom of the, the bottle and, you know, sure. <laughs> what did Ben Demon Hunter say? I'm sorry, I missed that one. Oh, the right for the yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hornet, hornets on your, yeah, man. I'll never forget the first time I had Corey. It's so damn good, though. I mean, I think it's a. I mean, if you do like Pete, if you already like Pete and you've already had the Uga doll, it's the next logical place to go, really. Next I to like a, a good, good like Talisker or like a a really good um, Lagavulin or a Lafroig or something. I mean, those are like the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. All right, buddy. Um, I guess it's time to wrap it up, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, again, thanks, everybody. We appreciate the support. Do hit like on this video if you haven't yet. Uh, it helps more than you realize, and it just takes a second. And if you haven't, subscribe to Telex to Whiskey Tech. Subscribe to Mom Miser Whiskey Reviews. We'll be back here next Tuesday for Tasty Tuesday with Telex and Malt. We are doing a knock 24, or I'm sorry, a knock 12 and a knock 18. Should be a really, really great show. Uh, we're going to be looking forward to it and hope to see everybody's uh, digital faces there. And until next time, be safe. And hopefully you can uh, grab one of those bottles uh, before the show on the 15th if you get a chance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Be safe. Wear a mask, all that jazz. And uh, if you uh, stumble across in the knock, grab it up. Join us. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And. I, I, I can't wait. Uh, did you hear anything before we go? Have you heard anything about them changing the line at all? Are they going to keep the same? I have line? not. Okay. I have not. Hopefully they don't do any crazy changes like some of these other guys have done with these uh, bottlings. Because Enoch has done a good job so far from what I've seen. Yeah, they're part of that same group that's part of the the folks with uh, uh, Tybev, the yeah. Holden, right? So hopefully, fingers crossed, right? Yeah, Tybev have changed bottle blur, but hopefully they keep Enoch for around the way it is for a while. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody, stay oh, safe. Uh, it is the uh, 40th anniversary of the murder of John Lennon. So, you know, uh, pay our respects to the great John Lennon and uh, his messages of peace, love, and wisdom. Got to feel that. So, And tomorrow is number nine. Number nine. Number nine. <laughs> number nine. Number nine. We're going to fade like that. We're going to go white album on this. I love it, man. I, I love all this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Peace, y'all. Much love.